Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here again with Amy. Hi! And we're going to be talking about uh, a few serious things again. So this video we're going to be talking about anxiety and depression, which is something that's really close to our hearts. Um, we both personally struggle with it. Um, uh, yeah, mine's more recent, I guess, development. And yeah. like, how long would you say that yours has been? Uh, probably like two years now. Yeah, yeah. same. Like. Probably the end of um, my first university degree, so like 2014 I started struggling with this. Um, but it's only sort of come to a head, I guess, in the past like year or so. I've yep. sort of figured it out. So yeah, what we're going to do is um, we both have some questions that, uh, yeah, AIM doesn't know what I'm going to ask. And yeah, she doesn't know what I'm going to ask. So yeah, yeah, I guess we're just going to do something very candid. <laughs> Hopefully you guys... Um, get something out of it because that's what we are hoping for today so. yeah we're just hoping to be very brave and honest and real and talk about our experiences and hopefully you guys can relate and you'll yeah learn a bit about learn what it like. and yeah and how to deal with it if you're um going through it as well so it's a very casual video mm -hmm. just in my bedroom at my parents place so yeah do you wanna do you wanna go first yeah <laughs> okay okay so my first question is what kind of things do you worry about? Oh, good mm -hmm. question. Um, everything. It's I've always been, um, well, in my, I guess, older self, so not as a kid. Um, I was kind of fearless more <laughs> as a kid. Like, I would be jumping into all these things, being like, yeah, I want to do that, I want to do that. And then I guess my sort of insecurities and worries came in high school, and that was um, the usual, like, self-esteem issues, blah, 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 and, like, wanting to know what other people were doing and... Um, yeah, but in terms of recently things I worry about, I worry about money, I worry about um, the safety of my friends and family, I worry about health, I worry about my future, my career, I worry that I'm falling behind. So yeah, I guess day to day struggles that most people would worry about, um, but I guess when I get into my own like, sort of like a downward spiral, I'm thinking everything at once, like, oh, I really want to see my granny. Granny's up in Canberra, how do I get to Canberra? I'm working full time now, I can't go up there. And it's just like a constant sort of worry circle, which is kind of hard to get mm. out of. Um, so yeah, I guess I worry about a lot of different things. Um, <laughs> okay, um, here we go. My first question for you, Amy. Yeah. What are the most common misconceptions about depression, do you think? Hmm. What are the most common misconceptions about depression? You know, I think, for me, the first thing that jumps into mind is that someone who's, you come across someone in life who's, you know, happy and bubbly and, um, you know, it always on the exterior putting out a, a conception that they are happy and he mm. healthy and they're laughing a lot. And I mean, I, I relate to that because I'm a very bubbly person um, and I, I'm, to, you know, to the outside world, I could be a really <clears throat> happy person. Um, I definitely assume that sort of um, role, I guess. I'm always really happy and smiley, mm. and but inside, I struggle day to day. And it, it, it it's a struggle sometimes to get out of bed in the morning. Sometimes I find myself getting out of bed at midday and thinking, gosh, I've just wasted the whole morning. And... Then I'll do something in the afternoon and I'll be, oh, happy, bubbly Amy. And then inside I'm, 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 I'm not. So I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that, you know, if you're happy and bubbly on the outside, you must be a happy, bubbly person on the inside. And I think that a person who, you know, who is really happy and bubbly could really be struggling on the inside. So I think it's really important when you meet someone to not just assume that things are all going well in their life. Mm. I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions about depression. Yeah. Like depression doesn't mean as well, like adding to that, that if you're sad for a day, it doesn't mean you have depression as well. No, not like at people all. who might be down for a week about something that's happened, like putting the label of depression on is kind of, I don't know, it's a bit it's a bit harsh, I guess, to other people who are like honestly have been diagnosed with yeah. it and are dealing with it. Like I think it's used very lightly. Mm -hmm. A lot of mental health 
problems are getting thrown around a lot as well. Like, oh, I've got anxiety. It's like, well, maybe you're just a worry exactly. person. Exactly, a like worry ward. There's yeah. something, there's such a big difference between depression and just being sad as well. 100%. Which a lot of people. You know, I was listening yeah. to a podcast the other day and the woman on the podcast made a comment about something, you know, she, she was in Europe and she was shopping and the shops weren't open and she made a comment, I was so depressed. I was so depressed and like I literally was driving in my car listening to this podcast and like shaking my head because I just could not imagine like just dropping the word depressed yeah just it's it's getting thrown around too completely much. It's really annoying completely and I think and depression is a very serious thing and a lot of people who you meet are very happy on the outside are really struggling on the inside which is me day to day really you never know like who could be on antidepressants or who could be dealing with it as mm. Ames said like the happiest people can be the most depressed which mm. is awful look at comedians that. I mean we were just discussing the other day yeah. about comedians yeah the funniest people that you see on stage yeah. and in film they can be internally just so unhappy mm. but they give such a front and they're acting all the time they're acting over their sadness which is really rough to think about I need to ask you a question. Sure, sure. Okay. I'll pick a good one. Like, I'll just move this around. In my little <laughs> monogrammed book. Oh, yeah. There it is. <gasps> Get it from Typo at all good stores. <laughs> uh, <laughs> monogramming, yeah. <laughs> it's not always <laughs> Anyway. Okay. <clears throat> Do you avoid situations where you might have anxiety? Um, uh, sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, that's a hard one. Like, I am at the point where I can still go to social events and be in crowds. Like, I get uncomfortable because I'm a bit more claustrophobic than um, have anxiety, but <clears throat> excuse me about that. So, in terms of um, being in a crowded lift, like things like that, I'm like, oh, like that's just more my claustrophobia. I don't like being mm. in contained spaces. Like, if I was ever to go in a cave, it wouldn't be funny. Like, uh, I, I just. Clubbing last night. <laughs> Clubs are getting pretty packed, um, but I wouldn't like if I'm feeling. It's more if my mood is so down that even going to an event is not going to perk me up. So that would be my take on that question. Mm. So yeah, there's been times where there's um, there's drinks or there's functions and things that I I just can't bring myself to go because even, I, I'm so in this pit of just like sadness that I just don't I don't see the that I'm going to add to that. Like mm. you know people can throw around oh like you'll take your mind off it if you go to this event or so much it's if, so much if, harder than if that. you like um just like put on a brave face and go and like smile and hang out with everyone it'll take mm. your mind off everything it's like once you get there you're like okay cool like let's see how i go and you're just standing there and you're feeling like no one gets you you're trying to just like you're just faking it all the time like oh like how have you been what are you doing mm. at the moment and the then small talk and then you still um, feel like you have to prove something as well at those kind of social events like I don't know I always feel like it's awful because when you're in that or well, I don't know if I'm in that state of mind I feel like I'm kind of apologizing for everything that I'm doing mm -hmm. so I'm like oh I'm just doing this at the moment um, and like I might not be doing that but then I'm gonna do this and what who like what am I trying to prove to people like I don't know like it's still like I don't comprehend why my brain mm -hmm. is like that way I constantly have to be thinking like the other person's really going to attack me for my job or like that I just watched TV on a Saturday and didn't go out. Like no one is truly going to judge me for that. But in my mm. mind, I'm like, oh, they're already going to think I'm a loser for not doing that or doing this. So, mm. um, yeah, I've completely forgotten the question. <laughs> well, like roundabout. Um, mm. but yeah, social situations. Social that, situations. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say it happens that often. Like I mm. go to work every day. Um, like I'm, more like unwell like I wouldn't want to go to work but mentally um, sometimes it is good for a distraction but I'll generally it takes a lot of time for me to get out of bed and maybe me just too. go for a walk like it takes a lot and it's not as easy as just oh draw back the curtains get out of bed it's like okay maybe sleep for a few more hours and see how you feel so mm -hmm. I don't get pressured um, from my partner he doesn't tell me to do anything and like gets mm -hmm. angry at me for being down um, but yeah, you sometimes need a phone call or a, um, like, I use funny... Call me. I will call you. Yeah. And you know I do call you. <laughs> but like, mm -hmm. literally, yeah, any funny videos or like your favourite, like, pictures of your friends. Like, something like that will make 
me feel a little bit better enough to get out of bed. But yeah, mm -hmm. definitely I've avoided a few situations. Um, me too. Because of mental health reasons. Ah, oh, me yeah. too. Like there's so many days that I, I wake up in the morning and if I don't have anything on that day, I sometimes I won't get out of bed. Like because you don't see the point. It's awful. Yeah. It's awful. And and you know, so I think having at least one social situation on during the day is a good motivation to get out of bed but i think when you are so low it, you, it's really hard to get out of bed and mm. and it should never be it should never be pushed it should never be pushed on you you should never no. you should never be forced to get out of bed when you're having a low day you, you know i think the best thing to do is to feel it just to ride the wave and feel it and yeah and when you're, you're ready to feel emotions 100 percent, 100 percent okay 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 um okay describe what your anxiety attacks or panic attacks are like for oh someone who doesn't gosh. know what they are like or what they feel like okay so for me i when i have my anxiety and panic attacks they i don't know if you've watched the previous videos or something I, i've suffered from an eating disorder the last two years um so my anxiety and panic attacks are usually about body image um, a big thing about eating disorders is <laughs> being unkind to yourself, um, being constantly, you know, told by the voices in your head that you're not good enough, that you're a failure, that you are, well, for me, it's that I'm fat or, um, you know, I've put on weight or, you know, I didn't listen to my eating disorder that morning and I ate something that was out of... The rule book in my head of eating and that's when the panic attacks start um they're usually at home i, I don't usually get them when i'm out um but when i'm at home um i you know it's not really the the past panic attacks i've had have been teary um but sometimes it's just raising my voice um part of the movie for a second <laughs> um <laughs> um but um <laughs> side note hello side note. classic side note um no i i've raised my voice and i um i get really anxious and i you know i start usually i'll start shaking and um it's usually i start saying things that are really unkind to myself like oh you know you just look how fat you look today or you know, is that you inside voices or you like No, I verbalize it. Okay. Like, like I'll say it to my mum if she's around or my sister or even my dad and whoever's there at home with me. And, it, it, you know, it's usually, and I'll text you about it. And, you know, it's usually, um, it, it's not very long. My panic attacks don't last very long, but they're very, um, they, 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 they hurt a lot when they happen because I, it's not like I hurt myself physically or anything like that, but I, I hurt myself with verbally with the words mm -hmm. and then when the panic attacks finish I I'll, I'll sit to my I'll sit down and I'll sort of think <clears throat> you know why are you being so cruel to yourself that's like the main thing mm -hmm. um the main thing with my anxiety and with my depression is I'm not kind to myself I call myself mean names I you know I'm really unfair to myself and you know, and the truth is, I don't think I'm fat. Like, I don't think I'm fat at all. But when I have these panic attacks, it's my, it's my eating disorder, um, feeding me these mean things about myself. Mm. And those are really what my panic attacks look like. Really, mm. they they're just very quick. They I raise my voice. I can get teary, and I'm very unkind to myself. And I think the thing that picks me up out of these panic attacks is being rational and looking at myself and saying and you know trying to say nice things to myself like no you're not fat you're going to be a fantastic teacher you know you're you've got good friends yeah just trying to look at the positives trying to look at the positives yeah. yeah but i mean they're not very regular um these panic attacks they um it's usually yeah it's not regular at all so it but when they do happen they are not nice and I get really anxious and, and yeah, that's basically it. What keeps you from staying at home when you have sad or off days? What is your motivation? What is my motivation? Yeah. Oh, it's a hard one. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Well, I mean, sorry about the background noise as well. The kitchen's just behind, so if you're hearing anything, like it's nearly it's the roast time. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's my mum cooking, so apologies to the background noise. Um, my motivation um, to get out of bed, it's I just have to think like like we're only I, I think about like a, the the grand ideas I think so I always just, like if I honestly can't get out of bed that day um, and I've been in bed you know one o'clock and I'm just like lying there and just further and further just getting down about everything like I'm on my phone looking at people who are at their jobs that they love or like they're on holidays um, and you're looking at people who are just like living their dreams I'm like oh I want that life I want that life it's so depressing it's so depressing and I'm just getting further and further like I don't want to get out of bed because what's the point I have to think of something really small as well to get out of bed to begin with so if I go up to go to the bathroom then I'm already like standing up so that's me like out of bed and even if I move to the couch like I've I've moved like from bed um, and yeah, I think about the grand scheme of things. Like there are some people like, it's awful to think, but like, I'm in Melbourne, Australia, like a beautiful country. Like I try and think of, I'm so lucky to be here, to have this life. My parents have given me this life. Um, every minute is a minute wasted. So I'm thinking of all these like quotes and like things of these big grand ideas that I need to like appreciate that I'm here, that I'm living and I've got. Um, all four limbs that I can walk that I'm I can see and like I try and think of like big picture things because then I don't I don't know I don't feel so like I feel like I have purpose so a lot of the time I'm like well why am I here like I I didn't like I, I really didn't choose to be here like I was given this life which is amazing but at the moment I just feel like I'm wasting it and why am I wasting it I'm in bed oh I should get out of bed and I just try and talk myself into a small step like okay even if I go to the supermarket that's something I can tick off the list. That's a job that I, I need groceries. Um, I need to, I, I will be driving somewhere. There will be, be people there. And even just like being in that environment, it makes me feel less isolated if I know that there are people around me. Whereas some people run away from um, social situations like that. Mm -hmm. Like being in a group of people, sometimes I'm like, oh, at least I'm like confident that there are people around me. Like even just walking around the city, there'll be people everywhere. I'm like, oh, okay, like it's not just me. Whereas in bed, in my room alone or whatever like it's just me in my house like there's no one else there like I live out of mm -hmm. home so it's just me if um if Brad's not around like it's just me there and it's, it gets really a bit like sad I'm like oh well, no one's gonna know I could just stay in bed all day um so it's just remembering what I'm supposed to do and it's hard um I'm, I can't just switch off the thoughts mm -hmm. and once you're in that spiral it's so hard and I, I really do struggle um a lot to get um out of bed yeah sucks mm -hmm. so yeah I think it's just really focusing on what your purpose is for that day and if like grand I like the grand ideas of your life and like this like I'm a doctor like I want to be a doctor like this is my life so I have to get out of bed so I can be that doctor that could be overwhelming for some people so obviously this is like not gonna work for everyone so maybe it's best to think of a small thing like oh, okay I just go for a walk and that's something I can tick off my day because um, the more you feel like when I wake up early or when I've got work early and I come home early. You just add, add so much more to your day. Like if you wake up at seven o'clock or six thirty in the morning, you've got so many more hours. Like if you get up at one o'clock in the afternoon, especially now, like it's getting dark already. And what's the mm -hmm. time? It's like four forty-five, and it's already getting dark. Like winter, you've got that. You have no daylight, yeah. so you can feel like you've done so much of your day. Which, um, yeah, it's hard. It anyway, is. It we're is a bit hard. of a tangent, anyway. <laughs> it's anyway, also, it's yeah. also interesting. It's. It, it, you know, it's you. You have to think of of this life, and we don't know how long we're going to be on this planet for. So I think yeah, well, some people are blessed and like they're hundred and they're still yeah. living, and some yeah. people were tragically taken away at like the mm -hmm. age of you know ten. Like you don't know what when you're going to go. You have no idea, and that's why it's so important to be here on this earth and live as fulfilled a life as you can, you know, with your family, with your friends, doing what you love, mm. you know, travel if you can. And, and, and it, it, you know, if you can't get out of, if you don't do your university assignment one afternoon because you're lacking the motivation, that, that's okay. You know, it's, it, it, it's so much more important to take care of yourself. Yeah. And, and if you need that whole day in bed, then take it. Take because it. Mm. you don't know what, like if you're out and about with that sort of mental health like you're so distracted like you could 
something bad like I don't know like it's you need that time to yourself to reflect and if you want to cry all day do it like we're not saying that you can't ever be down because obviously we get down a lot mm. um which isn't fun but you, you need to have that mental health day to just like check in mm. and be like okay why am I sad like what what sort of things am, am I doing to help myself? Yourself, you have to give yourself some credit. You have to yeah. give yourself a break. A break. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. All right.